Welcome everyone, my name is Richard Briggs, I'm filling in for Violet this month, and I am visited here by my friend Chris Rickabaugh. Hi there. Uh, we're here to talk to uh, Chris today about voiceover and voiceover acting industry and everything that goes with it. Thank you for doing this for us. Yeah, you're very welcome. I mean, he's not only a, a, an actor, but he's also a coach. Quick. How did you get involved in voiceover? Completely by accident. Oh yeah? Yes. I met a friend. Are you a voice actor? He said, yeah, yeah, this is what I do. So I asked him, how does one get into that? And he stopped me and said, don't you ever do that. Don't do that to yourself or your loved ones. Right. Please stop now. And I did for the next two years until he called me and said, you want to record this thing? I know I told you never to do it, but now but... I need you. But... Voices are very recognizable, and the community, by and large, the fans, they know us. Any type of, of advice other than, don't do it, you know, can you <laughs> it's give It's great to, advice, don't do that. Don't can you give to, to those who are actually still trying to do, who are trying to break in, and or um, have had a little bit of success, but still have not broken through? Really gotten into it, because it is a tight-knit community, we're all kind of a family. Mm -hmm. It's tough because there's not any clear-cut way to break into this industry. There are so many different routes. And then you meet people and, and they realize you have talent and you work with them. They want to work with you because they know what you can do. But first and foremost, the biggest thing for me is be an actor. Don't just say, I want to be a voice actor and have no ability to act. You, you have to have that understanding or else it won't translate. It's really a matter of teaching them to basically relearn, is what we're talking about? Relearn how to use their How to their use instrument. their instrument yeah. in a proper way. Because I, uh, many people, even me, whenever I first got into this, I had this thought process where I was just going to push with everything I had to create a sound. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Actually, uh, an old teacher of mine, Tony Oliver, he showed me the way to change the placement of the air in in your uh, your instrument. Okay. So if you place it higher, you're not actually straining your vocal cords, you're just changing the way the air comes out of your mouth. And then you can actually make them uh, a little bit uh, older by bringing, bringing the air down here. All right, Chris, thanks so much. You're very welcome. Have a good day.